Welcome to the next session of uh, our pathology lecture series. And uh, in this session and in the next session, I'm going to talk about chronic inflammation. Now, over two sessions, I'm going to talk to you about various aspects of how inflammation progresses and also on a specific type of chronic inflammation called chronic granulomatous inflammation and on the various cells that are involved in chronic inflammation. Now, each of this is important in its own way because you'll need to know the cells which are involved in chronic inflammation and the role of the cells and some examples of various aspects of chronic inflammation and granulomatous inflammation. So, moving on to the definition of chronic inflammation. Very easy. It is inflammation of prolonged duration. In acute inflammation, we saw that inflammation took place for a few minutes to hours or even days. But in chronic inflammation, it can take over weeks or months to develop. In fact, even years. There are some types of chronic inflammation such as rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, which are inflammations that a person bears throughout his life, his or her life, and they are on chronic anti-inflammatory drugs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAID that you learn in pharmacology is anti-inflammatory to prevent inflammation. So these people take these drugs for a prolonged period of time. So chronic inflammation is a whole period that is encompassed by active inflammation and when there is inflammation the tissue gets destroyed and at the same time the body tries to repair itself. Now, repair is a process of healing, which I will discuss in subsequent lectures. But these are the stages in which chronic inflammation occurs. It is admixed with healing. A chronic inflammation can progress from an acute inflammation. And most cases don't actually progress. An acute inflammation results. When you've seen our lectures in acute inflammation, you realize that in cases of acute inflammation, it heals or resolves, that is healing or resolution. Or it can progress to abscess or fistula or an ulcer or a sinus. If none of this happens, it goes on into chronic inflammation. Now, an example of an acute inflammation going on to chronic inflammation is an acute cholecystitis, that is inflammation of the gallbladder, which goes on to chronic cholecystitis. An acute pyelonephritis, which is an inflammation of the kidney, which goes on to chronic pyelonephritis. Deep-seated pelvic abscesses. The pelvic abscess, which is near the ovary or near the, somewhere in the abdomen, that can go on into a chronic inflammation. If you remember, an abscess is nothing but uh, an accumulation of pus, and that can lead on to chronic inflammation. Inflammation in the bone, osteomyelitis, where if the bone doesn't settle, it, if the bone inflammation doesn't settle, it goes on into chronic inflammation. Accumulation of pus in the thorax, which is empyema. As much as it progresses from chronic inflammation, the other option is, as much as it progresses from acute inflammation, the other option is a chronic inflammation starts off as a primary chronic inflammation. It may be chronic from the beginning. It need not start from an acute inflammation. You may have a patient who has a normal gall bladder but progresses to chronic inflammation without the step of acute inflammation. So remember, there are two points when it comes to progression or development of a chronic inflammation. The first is it progresses from acute. The second is it need not progress from acute. It is just a primary chronic inflammation. So continuing from the previous slide, when does an inflammation progress from acute to chronic? Now, it occurs only when the acute inflammatory response cannot be resolved. For example, the bacteria may be very strong enough, very uh, resistant to the antibiotics that the patient has taken. So, the bacteria persists. So, the macrophage is not able to eat the bacteria. Or, there may be a foreign body inside the body which is interfering with the mechanism of healing. The foreign body could be a piece of glass, a piece of metal, or mm, any prosthetic agent that after surgery you have put into the body, but it is still interfering with healing, or even the suture material. 
Now, any condition where an acute inflammation due to a very strong bacteria or a foreign body being present goes on to chronic inflammation results in a very severe type of inflammation. Other examples, we've seen examples like chronic cholecystitis and osteomyelitis. Other examples could be a pneumonia progressing to a lung abscess or an ulcer in the stomach starts off as gastritis, inflammation, and it erodes deeper inside and becomes a chronic inflammation. Atherosclerosis, the blood vessel walls are thickened because of excess accumulation of fat that we eat. Now fat is something that loves our body so much that it likes to stay on in the body. So where does it stay? It stays in the blood vessels, all along the walls of the blood vessels, resulting in atherosclerosis. Now, atherosclerosis is a separate topic of its own later on. Chronic inflammation arises under all the following circumstances that you see listed here, and also in many more circumstances, but these are a few common examples. The most common condition being persistent infections. Certain microorganisms like tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is caused by bacilli. Syphilis is caused by treponema pallidum and viruses and certain types of fungi. Now, these are of a very low toxicity, but they remain for a prolonged period of time. So they produce a type of immune reaction, which is called delayed type hypersensitivity. There are four types of hypersensitivity reactions, which you will read in microbiology. One of them is delayed hypersensitivity, which takes over a prolonged period of time. Or the patient may be exposed to certain exogenous or endogenous substances. Exogenous, the best example is silica particles. A person who is working in mines or in the sand blasting industry is exposed to silica. Silica is uh, one of the chemical constituents of sand or in the glass making industry. They're exposed to silica. This goes inside and it can produce a chronic inflammation. Or endogenous, such as atherosclerosis, what I told you in the previous slide. Now, in atherosclerosis, lipids accumulate in the blood and they accumulate beneath the blood vessel in the layer between the intima and the media and that thickens the blood vessel and produces an inflammatory reaction the third type is example is autoimmunity where there are auto antigens against our own body tissues I gave you the example of systemic lupus erythematosus and rheumatoid arthritis a couple of slides ago. Now, these are aspects of chronic inflammation that take months and years to develop. Now, examples of autoimmunity are SLE and rheumatoid arthritis where a person develops antibodies against his own cells. I have a body, but I develop antibodies against my own cells. And my antibodies destroy my own cells. 